Oh, ghost stances. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice you there. Today we're going to be reading something a little bit more difficult. It's called The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming by Lemony Snicket. Let's get this started, shall we? The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming. This story ends in someone's mouth. But it begins in a tiny village, more or less covered in snow. The snow had fallen during the long night, during the children had pressed their faces to the window, looking for a glimpse of a man who they suspected, bringing them wonderful gifts. But instead, they, had t they heard a terrible noise from a certain cottage in the neighboring arrondissement, a word which means a place where something was being born. The cottage was already regarded with some suspicion, as it was the only place not decorated with flashing colored lights this time of year. The thing that was being born was a latka, a word which here means potato pancake. Latkas are traditional parts of the celebration of Hanukkah, a holiday commemorating a miraculous Jewish military victory. Oh, nearly everything in this world is born screaming, and the latka was no exception. Even though the latka wasn't conceived and born the way you and I were conceived and born, but instead it was fashioned from grated potatoes, chopped onion, imagination, beaten eggs, and house gamer videos. Oh, and a dash or two of salt. Slapped into a pan full of olive oil, heated at a very high temperature, and this is when it began to scream. The latka was suffering so much it had leapt out of the hot pan and out the window and began to run screaming down the boulevard. Again! This may seem like unusual behavior for a potato, but this is a Christmas story in which things tend to happen that would never occur in real life. It's a squirrel. The latka ran past a row of flashing colored lights, which hung from the, r the rain gutters for a less suspic suspicious cottage. What's all the ruckus? said the lights in unison. We're the ones who are supposed to be dominating the neighborhood with our cheerful glow. It was just thrown into a pan of boiling oil, the latka cried. Can you believe it? Yes, said the flashing lights, but we can't imagine why. Because I'm a latka, said the latka. The olive oil reminds us of the oil used to re eradicate the temple of the following, the, the following the defeat of the antichurches at the hands of the Maccabees. Oil was only supposed to last for one night, but there was a miracle, and it lasted for eight. Plus, frying makes my skin, my skin crispy and brown. That's right. So you're basically hash browns, said the flashing colored lights. Maybe you can be served along with Christmas ham. I'm not a hash browns, cried the latka. I'm something completely different. So lights again. Same picture. The latka rounded the corners and found itself face to face with a candy cane, which wrinkled its red and white nose at the latka at a distance. I'm trying to spring. I'm trying to sprinkle the night air with my peppermint scent. And the candy cane said, "Your mouth-watering smell, not to mention all the yelping and spoiling the effect." My mouth-watering smell is part of the cozy feeling of Hanukkah. And the latka replied, It reminds us that things are better now than they were in 175 BCE. That's kind of a rounded number. When the people were not allowed to practice their religion in order to study the Talmud, they had to hide in caves, and they heard Greek soldiers approaching. They pretended they were gambling with small spinning tops called dreidel. 
sort of like Joseph and Mary hiding in the, in the manger, said the candy cane. Someone should write a Christmas carol about you. I'm not part of Christmas, cried the laughter. I'm only a totally different thing. Ah! ah. The screaming of the laughter grew quieter and quieter as the pancake ran out of the village and into the surrounding forest. Its utter fury was unbated, a phrase which here means the laughter was still very annoyed in the objects whom it had spoken. But it was quite tired, and so it decided to rest for a few minutes beneath the branches of a little pine tree. The little pine tree was napping, but woke up the sound of objects plopping at its feet. Plopping sitting down, not excrements. Are you a present? the pine tree asked. Presents are pretty much the only thing allowed to sit beneath me during this time of year. The to sighed. Presents aren't really a big part of Hanukkah, it said in a voice of hoarse from screaming. There's nothing wrong with gifts giving to loved ones, of course, but it's more important to light the candles of the eight consecutive nights to commemorate the miracle in the temple and the miracle of victory when you're thoroughly outnumbered. So you shouldn't give up hope, said the laughter. But Santa Claus, said the pine tree. The laughter was too exhausted to scream. Santa Claus has nothing to do with it, the laughter said. Christmas and Hanukkah are completely different things. Pine tree, let me tell you a funny story about pagan rituals. But before the pine tree could begin its story, a family came, trooping through the snow, searching the forest carefully. We shouldn't have waited until the last minute to get ready for the holiday, said the father of the family, who was holding an axe. We'll find a good one. You should give up hope, said the mother, and pointed at the pine tree. Look! It's perfect, said the daughter. Beautiful, agreed the son. And such a marvelous shape, said the mother. And the skin looks so crispy. And the father, and reached down and scooped up the laughter from the snow. We'll need to reheat it, of course. But this will be perfect for Hanukkah dinner, and a topping of a, of applesauce, sour cream, or even jam. I'll refry it in oil," said the mother, to remind us of the red, red, red occasion of the temple, and the triumph of the Maccabees over the Antichoches. And the daughter, after hiding in caves all the time, the son chimed in, and the father smiled, down at the latka, in his midden and then stared curiously at his other hand. What was I thinking bringing this axe? He said to himself. This family strolled back to the village, walking past all the cottages and flashing colored lights, and smiled, smiling politely at the candy canes until they reached their own home. The family carried the latke into their home, which was warm and cozy, and sat down at the table. They lit their flickering candles of a menorah, or... Hanukkah, which is a branch candle opera designed specifically for the holiday. There you go. That's a, that's a candle opera thing. It's very frustrating not to be understood in this world. If you can say one thing to keep being told that you mean something else, it can make you want to scream. But somewhere in the world, there is a place for all of us where you are an electric form of decoration, a peppermint-scented sweet a source of timber or a potato pancake. On a cold, snowy night, everyone and everything should be welcomed somewhere, and the latka was welcomed into a home full of people who understood what a latka is, and now it fits into its particular holiday. And then they ate it. That's it. They ate the main character. That's not how stories are supposed to go. I can go back to my golf dummies. I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me. Oh, golf balls.